Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the gentlelady as well. And still I rise, Madam Speaker, as a proud ally of the transgender community. And I rise tonight with a special message. This message means a lot to me because I truly believe that the pledge is correct. We pledge allegiance to a flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. All cannot exclude the trans community. All has to include the trans babies, the children in Texas who are having to suffer through debates about what they can do athletically. All has to include people who lose their lives simply because they're being who they are. I rise with the message of, I am with you, I am your ally, and I live today to live to see the day that trans women will not have to live in fear of dying because of who they are. And trans children can grow up and simply be children in this country where we pledge liberty and justice for all. I thank you and I yield back. Thank you, Congressman Green. And uh, you are absolutely right. All is all and love is love. That concludes our special order hour. And I want to thank each of my colleagues this evening for their participation. And Madam Speaker, I yield back. The gentlewoman yields back. Under the Speaker's announced policy of January 4th, 2021, the Chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, for 30 minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, still I rise. And I rise on this occasion to bring to the attention of this House H. Res. 746, the original National Domestic Violence Awareness Month Resolution of 2021. H. Res. 746 expresses support for National Domestic Violence Awareness Month and that Congress should continue to raise awareness of this issue. This resolution has 160 original co-sponsors including 18 Republicans. It is a bipartisan resolution. And I'm honored to say that the lead co-sponsor from Louisiana, Mr. Garrett Graves, is a person that has been very helpful in helping to get this resolution presented and get signatures of persons who would be supportive. Domestic violence is of more prolific a problem than many realize. Domestic violence is a problem that too often is concealed. Many people don't report the fact that they're being abused. People are locked in. They find themselves having to live with abuse because the abuse is being perpetrated by someone that they love, someone that they care for, but someone that does not care as much for them. Nearly one in three college women say they, they, they have been in an abusive dating relationship. 92% of homeless women experience severe physical or sexual abuse at some point in their lifetimes. A 2020 survey by the National Network to End Domestic Violence reported that 76,525 violence victims were served by domestic violence shelters and programs around the nation in a single day. And additionally, 11,047 requests for services went unmet, went unmet because of a lack of resources we have to do more to help the victims of domestic violence. Congress can do more to help the victims of domestic violence. Congress should do more 
to help the victims of domestic violence. Domestic violence impacts individuals of any gender. One in four women, one in seven men, ages 18 and older, will experience domestic violence at some point in their lives. Women ages 18 to 34 experience the highest rates per capita of intimate partner violence. Domestic violence impacts individuals of any race. African-American women experience intimate partner violence at a rate 35% higher than that of white women and about two times, 2.5 times the rate of women of other races. 21 to 55 percent of Asian and Pacific Islander women report experiencing domestic violence, that is physical assault, sexual assault, or both, during their lifetimes. 37.1 percent of Latinx females are victimized by intimate partner violence in a lifetime. One in three Native American women will be raped, and six in 10 will be physically assaulted in their lifetimes. Domestic violence impacts individuals of any sexual orientation. 61% of bisexual women, 43.8% of lesbian women, 37.3% of bisexual men, and 26% of homosexual men experience intimate partner violence during their lifetime. Too often, children are affected by domestic violence and sexual assault. One in 15 children are exposed to intimate partner violence each year, and 90% of these children are eyewitnesses to such violence. Children exposed to domestic violence are more likely to attempt suicide, abuse drugs and alcohol, run away from home, and become victims of human trafficking. Our children are suffering. Those who witness these acts of domestic violence need help. We need to provide more counseling for children. Even when this tragedy occurs, it is shameful for children to have to witness it. But more tragic than that, when children themselves are victimized, they have to carry that memory with them for a lifetime. One in 10 District of Columbia high school students reported experienced physical violence from a dating partner in the past year. Half of youth who have been victims of both dating violence and rape attempt suicide, compared to 12.5% of non-abused girls and 5.4% of non-abused boys. One large study found that men exposed to physical abuse, sexual abuse, and adult domestic violence as children were almost four times more likely than other men to have perpetrated domestic violence as adults. The point to be made is those who suffer from domestic violence and abuse are likely to perpetrate domestic violence and abuse, not all but a good many. There's a need for primary schools, secondary schools, and post-secondary schools to educate students about the issues of domestic violence, sexual assault, dating violence, and stalking. Education is the means by which many can avoid becoming victims. We must do more to educate our young. The term domestic violence is often inadequate because it fails to capture the full extent of the impacts that the event can have on a victim's life. 
The average cost of intimate partner violence over a victim's lifetime for medical and mental health care services is about $103,000 plus dollars. That's for women. And $23,000 plus dollars for men. The term domestic violence also fails to capture how, in some instances, domestic violence literally means domestic murder. Because on average, more than three women are murdered by their husbands or their boyfriends in the United States every day. Most murdered transgender women are killed by intimate partners. However, in spite of all of this, there is hope. Survivors of domestic violence are strong, courageous, and resilient, but they need help. Surviving the physical and mental abuse requires more than simply relocating. Many times, counseling is needed. The strength that they have is something that we can admire, but that strength can be fortified if they can have proper counseling so that they can get the assistance that they need not only to stabilize themselves mentally, uh, but also to understand that they are not the reason for the violence being perpetrated upon them. Too often the victims believe that they are responsible for the actions of the persons who are abusing them. They need help. This is what we can do. We can help to make sure people understand that victims are not responsible for what perpetrators do. <clears throat> A recently released multi-state study shows that the nation's domestic violence shelters are addressing victims' urgent and long-term needs and are helping victims protect themselves and their children. Domestic violence advocates provide life-saving essential services. There is a need to increase, there is a need to increase, not reduce funding for programs aimed at intervening in and preventing domestic violence in the United States. So therefore, I'm so proud tonight to say that we should resolve that the goals and ideals of Domestic Violence Awareness Month are important, that these goals and ideals should be pursued, that this House of Representatives can do more to help the victims of domestic violence. I would also add that this resolution expresses the sense that the House of Representatives, that Congress should continue to raise awareness of domestic violence and its devastating effects on individuals, families, communities, and support programs designed to end domestic violence in the United States. Madam Speaker, People ought not have to live in fear because they happen to be in an abusive relationship. Yes, people can take their issues to the police, women can, but too often they have to debate within themselves the consequences of going to the police, the authorities, because they understand many of them, that they have no other place to turn to. But thank God that this Congress has provided enough money for shelters so that many can leave the environment where the abuse is being perpetrated. This is a serious issue that we should all be concerned with. If we allow the perpetration and perpetuation of domestic violence to continue, it does not bode well for the fiber and fabric of our country. This is a great country.